Greetings to you all once again. Today, as we concentrate on the cross, I would like to briefly share with you what the cross means to us and at the same time, in what way we appropriate the merits of the cross in our personal life. A few words of introduction. <clears throat> As I was wondering what topic to choose, <coughs> Anand uh, called me and said, we need four Bible lessons. So immediately, I picked up one particular theme that I was from the themes that I was thinking about. That is four imageries of salvation. <coughs> Now, we all know the Bible verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. I also like to add 23 and 22 and 23. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Jews demand signs, Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to Gentiles. Let me illustrate <clears throat> how the cross is seen by other people who don't understand the real message of the cross. Suppose on Easter Day, I give you all a check for one lakh rupees to each and every one of you. How would the congregation react? Some people will definitely think, I don't think pastor will have so much money. He's not related to Ambani. <laughs> so anyway, he gave that. So some people will throw it in dustbin. Some people, okay, the pastor has given it. Okay, let's keep it. So sometimes they put it in a safe. Some people who love the pastor, oh, he has been in this church for so many years. So let's uh, frame the check and hang it on the wall in the hall. And some people believe that pastor really gave the check since he's a pastor, a minister of God. They go to the bank, encash it, and use the money for the personal and family purposes. Now, I would definitely be happy with the person who had encashed it. In the same way, when Jesus came into this world and died on the cross for our salvation, many people did not believe, do not believe, even in the future, there would be some people who would not accept Jesus Christ as the personal savior. But we have accepted him. We have boldly confessed that Jesus died for me. But at the same time, many a time as Christians, we do not know how to appropriate the merit of the cross. Basically because the Bible uses different words. I picked up four words that used to describe how the merit of the cross or the benefit of the cross is appropriate to personal life. Those four words are explained by Dr. John Stott in his book on the cross. One is propitiation. The second one, redemption. The third one is reconciliation. And the fourth one is justification. You would have heard these words in the order of worship. But many a time we say it mechanically without understanding the real meaning of these words. In fact, these four different words were taken from different contexts so that we can understand how Jesus' death could bring blessing to our personal life. 
probably you will remember the chorus. <clears throat> In the stars is handiwork I see. On the wind he, we, we, here we, on the wind he, I forgot it, majesty. Though he ruleth over land and sea, what is that to me? Jesus died 2,000 years ago, 200 years ago. So, is death, how could make an impact in our personal life? Now, these words clearly explain how we have to take the death of Jesus Christ and relate it to our personal salvation. The first word, propitiation, is taken from the religious context. In the Old Testament times, God told them to sacrifice animals for sin as sin offering, guilt offering, and so many offerings. And particularly, I would like to concentrate on Leviticus chapter 16, where once in a year, the chief priest has to select two goats. One he would offer and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. The other one, he will keep it at the center. He will place his hand on the other goat, which we call, normally call, scapegoat, and place all the sins of the people, the Israelites, on the head of that goat. Then after that, they will chase the goat into the wilderness. That goat will carry the sins of the people and go into the wilderness, wilderness and many a time it would be killed by the wild beasts. Now, take these offerings. God asked them to offer animals in order to tell them clearly by sacrificing these animals, your sins would be forgiven. In what way? This is the logic. God is holy. He wants His people to be holy. When they commit sin, the anger of God is instigated. The wrath of God is upon the wicked ones, upon the people who commit sin. Now, God tells as a shadow for the cross to the people in the Old Testament times to sacrifice animals, shed its blood. When I look at the death of the sheep, when I look at the blood, I think of the suffering of the sheep and forgive you because it has taken your place. In the same way, Christ has substituted us. We are the one who has committed sin. We are the one to be punished. But Jesus has taken all his punishment upon himself. He appeased God's anger. The other word for prop propitiation is appeasement. What is appeasement? Suppose your wife gets angry. In the evening, what do you do? You buy a bunch of roses and go home and give the roses, the bunch of roses, with a smile. That smile is called propitiating smile. In order to take away the anger, you propitiate certain things. In the same way, Jesus propitiated for our sins. Because God's anger is upon the sinners and Jesus Christ appeased God's anger and he has saved us. The second word is redemption. Now, this is taken from the commercial context. Now, what is this redemption or redeeming something? In those days or even now, people mortgage properties. When they are unable to pay the cost or the amount they have to pay, they will lose the property. 
Sometimes, when a family is, was unable to pay the debt, they will send the children as slaves to the one to whom they owe the money. And they will be slaves. And there are two ways of redeeming them, the property or the person. Either you pay the money and redeem the property. You pay the debt, redeem your children. Now, if you are unable to do that, on 50th day, that is the jubilee year, God said, you have to simply send them away. You should not demand money. Now, in either way, Jesus is redeeming us. He has redeemed us from the captivity of sin. Particularly, these four different passages talk about different words, explain those different words. The second one, Galatians chapter 3, uh, there we see Jesus Christ redeeming us, paying the price and redeeming us. Or simply asking the Satan to let us free. He simply says, you no longer have the authority over my property. These are my children. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus has done that. He is our Redeemer. He says to the Satan, these are my children. They believe in me. I died for them. I paid the price. He is the ransom. The third word is reconciliation. It is taken from the family context. When family members started hating each other or going away from each other, they are separated. Suppose some person comes and reconciles them, then that is an act of peacemaking and both the members who had been estranged come together and reconcile, be reconciled and start a new relationship. Now, the best example that Jesus gave is the lost son. That is the prodigal son. <clears throat> now, we have to remember that the key person or the hero is the father. Many a time we concentrate on the person, the son, but the hero is the father. And we also have to remember that it is the love of the father that sought him, waited for him to come back. We also have to remember that both suffered. Father also suffered because he's lost his son. The son also suffered because he had gone astray, lost everything, and he wanted to eat the pig's food. So both suffered because of that estrangement. Many people go away from God. Once our forefathers were went away from God, now Jesus Christ came and brought us and God together and reconciled us. Now, I want you to bear in mind, it's not just the estrangement alone. Many a time, People hate God. Why? He wants them to lead a holy life. They love to commit sin. They take pleasure in committing sin. When God says no, okay, we don't want that God. Okay? Many a time in this world, people go against God. They don't like God telling them to do good things. They want to do bad things. They take pleasure in that, in that life, unknowing that that kind of lid, uh, life will lead them to disastrous end, will take them to hell, and they will perish. Now Jesus has come and said, and we are going to hear through some of the anthems, that Jesus is calling us to him telling us or telling the whole world, I died for you. I suffered for you. Is it nothing for you? No, you are going to perish. I love you so much. 
now the underlying emotion of god for dying on the cross is love that is also brought out in some of the hymns and anthems it is love that seeks us god wants to reconcile with us now this reconciliation doesn't stop at one particular moment it should continue in order to show that jesus has given the holy communion the lord supper now whenever we participate in the holy communion we remember the death of cross on the cross of our lord and savior jesus christ but at the same time when we take it it points to our continuous relationship with god we always say lord by participating in it you live in us and we live in you so jesus came and reconciled us with god and that reconciliation should continue in our life whenever we participate or take the bread and wine we should always remember lord i have reconciled with you let me continue to have relationship with you the fourth word is justification we all have heard this word now we use it in a particularly different way it is justification doesn't mean okay okay it's okay if you sin or you are unable to do anything else so it's okay no it's not that it is not justifying your sin here the justification is taken from the legal context where someone is accused the crime is proved there's no justification the proved but someone comes and pays the price the accused is released accused is released in the same way we all are accused i don't know how many of you have stood in the witness stand in the legal court i have stood for the sake of church there was some problem property problem they called me they made me to stand in the witness stand it is really in a unique experience looking at the judge on the top all the lawyers in black coat you are standing alone in the witness stand yes all the sinners are standing in that way but jesus comes and says what is the punishment sometimes the judge says okay they have to pay some money jesus says i i am willing to pay the money sometimes judge says he has to be imprisoned christ says let me go into the prison send him away sometimes the judge passes a death sentence and jesus says i will die for him and he died in that way we all have received justification we are made righteous we are relieved dear brothers and sisters in christ through these hymns and anthems we are going to see how jesus is death is appropriated in our life jesus death is propitiation god's anger is upon us and jesus appeased god and he relieves us jesus death is redemption we are caught in the captivity of sin and satan and jesus paid the price and redeemed us Christ's death is a reconciliation. We have been estranged from God and Jesus Christ has brought us close to Father God. Christ's death is justification. We all are sinners. We all are accused. And Jesus takes our punishment upon himself and justifies us. Let's keep a moment of silence. Jesus died 2000 years ago what is that to me in what way his death is going to give me salvation 
oh lord through these beautiful imag- imageries we are able to understand your death oh lord all our sins are placed on your head you have substituted us as a scapegoat and took all punishment upon ourselves and we are let free lord you have redeemed us from the captivity of sin and satan and we thank you for that through the cross you have reconciled us with our heavenly father through the death on the cross you have justified each and every one of us you have given us your righteousness you took all our punishment upon you and we are made righteous yes lord help us to always remember that you have taken our place and given us all the blessings through the cross we thank you for that lord help us to hear your voice as our church choir continues to sing the message of the cross in jesus name we pray amen